Last time our competitors, Microsoft's Azure and Amazon's AWS, raced to set up Windows virtual machines. But today, there's a new challenge. Let's head down to the sideline, reporter Peter, for more. Yeah, thank you, Zach. Last time it was a pretty one-sided decision with Justin and AWS beating out Adam and Azure here, but then Adam threw down the gauntlet for a rematch with a Linux virtual machine. Let's see how it plays out. This time, Adam's going first, so. Cent OS, baby. Uh, Cent OS. All right, well, I'm going to go get with started. Amazon AMI because Cent it's based on Cent. All right, well, all right. Good. All right. Yeah, so. it's close enough. Okay, stop talking, start counting. All right, all right, all right. one, two. Okay, three Mississippis. All right, ready? All right, so I'm going to take a slight slight little extra added advantage time step here. I'm going to start with my resource group already created. You saw us doing this last time. You saw I had to create one first. Justin was kind enough to give me a five second head start and say, go ahead and use your existing resource group. So I'm going to click add. We're going to start by adding the instance. I'm going to get ready to go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add. Now I'm going to start by choosing one of the pre-made images, but I'm going to change that over to CentOS like we just talked about in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and use my existing resource group. I'm going to give this a name, call this VM2. I'm going to go ahead and instead of Ubuntu, choose CentOS right there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose username and password instead of a key because we saw how much fun Justin had having to work with usernames and passwords to decrypt them and use them to RDP in last time. So I'm going to go ahead and allow him to enjoy an SSH key this time. I'm gonna choose SSH, put RDP in there just for good measure, though we don't need it. And although I'm not gonna make any changes here, I'm gonna quickly flip through just to show you that we're allowing all the basics. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, no tags, right? No tags. All right, so no metadata. I'm gonna review and create. Ooh, 11 cents, last time it was like 27 cents. All right, so I'm off to the races. My VM is cooking. I'm gonna let that do its thing. As soon as it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to connect in. I'm gonna have to use PuTTY to connect in, so I'll need the public IP, and then I'll be able to target my PuTTY client against that. So what I'm gonna do while we're waiting is I'm just gonna go ahead, you can see, I've already got that spun up. I need PuTTY, so let me just go grab that real quick while we're waiting, so I forgot to load that. And then when that finishes, P, right? L-M-N-O-P? Yep. <laughs> there yep. we go. There we go. There's Putty right there. Where is it? There it is right there. And we'll just go ahead and run that. Just while we're waiting, have that available. And as <clears throat> soon as we are done deploying, I'll go ahead, I'll switch over to the VM, and then we'll be able to get the IP and connect in. I'm feeling good about this, Adam, but I guess we'll just have to wait, we'll and, have see, to wait uh, and see. We'll have to wait and see what the time comes down to. We'll have to wait. It is running. We're at, what, about a minute five right now. Now, my Windows VM, if you watched us in our first head-to-head, -head, took about four and a half minutes to deploy. Uh, you were a lot quicker out of the gate with getting the VM instance spun up, but you stumbled a little bit with having to get that pass key decrypted and then being able to RDP in, I was a little bit quicker on the end point where I was able to connect right through. So we'll see how that goes here, but it's probably gonna take me a better part of two, two and a half minutes to do my deployment. So I probably got about another minute before my VM finishes up. Uh, Azure is a little slower doing the actual VM deployments, but ultimately, you know, we joked around about it being one is better than the other last time. It's not really a question of better, it's really a question of which one gets you out of the gate faster, uh, but also something to consider is which one is actually perhaps a little more user friendly with regards to how we do deployments. Number of options, things we got to do. Uh, I would argue user friendly, click, 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 and I'm done. But, but then that whole. Uh, you got username and password. Right, so RDP in. Okay, session. there. So I'm good. Two minutes on the dot to get my VM done. So half the time it took, okay, there is my RDP connect option. It's not really RDP, it's just gonna give me the ability to see what I got. That's my public IP address right there. So let me just grab that and let me come over here. Let me go ahead and do that. Just take that out of there. Oops. And I took the one out of there, didn't I? Click yes, and let me log in as, let me 
put in my password. And boom, done. Uh, that was a pretty quick time. That was way quicker than the Windows VM. Lightning, baby. And, uh, we'll, we'll Linux have, lightning. We'll, we'll have to see how it plays out. All righty. I'm watching. Well, I'll tell you what, that was way faster. Adam's talking mad smack. But let's see if I can do it a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I am in my AWS management console. Uh, I'm going to hop over to my services, EC2, back to EC2. And Adam, you know, the, unfortunately, we don't always have exactly the same options. So we'll get close. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch an instance. And my instance is going to use the Amazon AMI that is uh, based on Scent, is my understanding, or Red Hat. Uh, so I'm going to select. And uh, let's see here. We, we went with T2 Small. I think it was. Actually, you went with a 2.8, so I'm going to go with a 2.8 this time as well. And I'm going to configure, and I want to make sure that I have this enabled. My subnet, uh, my auto-assigned public IP setting is already that. I just want to double check. I'm not going to assign anything else. Add storage. Storage looks good. No tags. Metadata. Not for this. we gotta, we got to get this going. Security group. This security group is a little bit different. I'm going to use this auto-created security group, SSH, TCP, port 22, from anywhere. Uh, not necessarily the most secure, but we'll serve our purpose here. I'm going to review and launch, and when I click launch, you know what, Adam, I don't have the ability to set a username and password. i got to create a key pair. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new key pair, and I'm going to say Linux pair, and I'm going to download that, and i got a little over zoom here. Oh, no. I was like, I can't click the button now. So there I'm launching. Now, my server is launching. It's installing everything. I'm going to need that key pair uh, in order to get to my bash prompt. Well, I can't just type in. I, I got to go do some things. Uh, by default, my key pair is going to be in my downloads. And if I look, that's just my PIM, pop, my PIM file. So there's my Linux pair PIM file. If I were to try to use this, I would get permission denied because uh, my permissions um, are too wide open. I actually have to pare those down. Nobody else should be able to read this. Uh, other than me. So I'm going to sudo, uh, oh, here we go, sudo chmod 400 and uh, Linux key pair. I, I think I know the password. Here we go. Uh, you you might have got one over on me, Adam, because uh, of a rookie oh, mistake. Oh, looks, oh, like you it, got in. looks like I got. Let's check my permissions. Here's my .pem file. Looks good. Now let's flip back over, see if, up. Oh, I'm up and running. I need to grab my public IP as well. I could use my DNS name, but you know, let's just go with the same. So I'm gonna copy this and SSH I. Uh, that is Linux pair. EC2 user is the default user. Uh, don't necessarily advise leaving that. So here we go. Yes, I'm good. And wait for it. Wait for it. And oh, oh is the, the anticipation is killing me. Oh, I'm gonna call done. And there we have it. We're, We'll have to see the results here shortly. Wow, what a game! We'll be talking about this one for years to come. And it looks like Peter is caught up with the winner. So let's head back down. All right, thank you, Zach. And as Justin celebrates, we're able to cut, catch up with Adam here. Adam, what happened that time? You know, I, I think I, I pulled a hammy in my fingers and just, you know, I ran off the rails. I don't know what else to say. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. Does, does faster mean better? No, no, faster just in this case, well, it means faster. That, that's uh, that's. What I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Faster is always better, right? That I, performance well, is the issue. Apparently, apparently. Uh, no, nah, right. nah, I, I just. But it, it was good. It was, it was good. It was uh, a good head to head. It was a good head to head, and uh, well, they're both comparable platforms. Just so happens I get to the. I'm a little quicker on the draw. You you are you are. Well, definitely uh, a, a great one here, and one we'll be talking about for years to come. Be sure to subscribe to ITPro TV to catch more great videos like this, and let us know in the comments what you want to see these two uh, go at it uh, with next time on uh, our our Cloud Bowl rematch. Google Cloud? Who not? Are we both doing Google Cloud? Google Cloud. Uh, see you next time. Who knows?